2005 through 2012 Nissan Pathfinder with the 4.0 liter engine, heater hose assembly. I'm Brian Nessa from How To Automotive. I'm gonna walk you step by step through the process of changing those out. So on this vehicle, the plastic portion of the heater hose broke right off and dumped all the coolant out. So we're going to be changing these hoses out. They're all one assembly. They cross over the back here. And there's an auxiliary water pump on the other side that we're going to change. It comes as all one assembly. We'll be changing this complete assembly out. I will link it up in the description of the video. To get started, you're going to need a bucket or something to catch the coolant underneath the vehicle. I positioned the coolant bucket slightly towards the driver's side. We're going to take the hose off here on the driver's side first next to the dipstick here. So if you follow this hose down, we're going to disconnect the hose here, pop it off. Then we're going to uh, disconnect the electrical connector for the pump here. To get the electrical connector off, you're going to need a pick tool. And you're going to need to pick the metal clip right here out. So you're going to need the sharp pick tool to get in there. And you're going to pull this metal clip out. Then you can pull the electrical connector off and set it aside. Now that you've got the connector off, we're going to remove two 10 millimeter nuts. They're holding the bracket, holding the pump down, one here and then one right here. So you're going to remove those 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter nuts. I used my Milwaukee M12 quarter inch ratchet here to make quick work of that. Now that you've got the pump unbolted, you're going to pull it forward and there's going to be another bracket right here. So you're going to unbolt that bracket here. It has a 10 millimeter nut there and then one further towards the passenger side. So go ahead and remove those two nuts. So now we need to take a couple hoses off here. You're going to use a hose clamp plier. Squeeze the clamps and slide them upwards and then pull the hose off. So after you get this hose off, the next hose will be the one next to it. Go ahead and remove the clamp and pull the hose off. On my vehicle, this is the one that broke on it. So I'm going to just slide the clamp back and remove the old piece out of the hose here. So now we're going to remove the hoses that are attached to the heater core. To get to those, I used a pair of 45 degree angle long needle nose pliers and got to the clamps and slid them back. So there's another bracket holding it on. I'm using the new hose here to reference where the bracket's going to be. So you're going to follow this uh, hose down and then you'll see the 10 millimeter bolt or nut on there. I'm using a wobbly socket with a... Uh, with a ratchet and a long extension to get to that. Once you get that unbolted, we can start working on getting the hoses off the heater hose pipes here up here at the top. As I was trying to do this, I uh, the whole thing is just falling apart and turning brittle on me. So now that we got the clamps back, I'm using a knife here and I'm making a little incisions on the hoses here. Then, then I'm going to use a pick tool or a screwdriver and then uh, kind of flare the uh, the hoses open a little bit and that'll then and, and pick behind them and that'll help free them up to get them off the uh, pipes here they like to adhere to them and get stuck on them so you're going to loosen up the uh, the hoses on the pipes here and once you get them lo loosened up and run this pick around it a few times then you'll be able to pull the hoses off the heater core here and most likely this is going to crumble and break into a lot of pieces as you pull it out it's perfectly normal that's what happens to these they get brittle and that's the reason why they need to be replaced so you're going to just pull these two hoses off right here. Once you get these two pulled off, then we need to go underneath and pull off the lower portions of the hoses going running towards the back of the vehicle. To do that, the best way to do that is to remove the passenger front wheel. If, uh, if you're doing this at home, use floor jacks and jack stands and jack it up and then remove the wheel. And then if you look here, somebody had already been working on here and flipped this inner skirt over. over. They put a screw in it. I don't recommend doing that. I recommend just flexing it back. And if you look back here, you can see the hoses going below. So you're going to flex the lining backwards. And then what you're going to do is use a pair of pliers, uh, hose clamp pliers, and you can get back here. We're going to remove the inner, the furthest one inside the hose first. You also may be able to do this with needle nose. So I got this right on the hose clamp, pulled it back. Once you get the hose clamp slid back, then you can take a knife, a pocket knife or a razor blade and make an incision on the hose here and make a slit. And then after you get it uh, cut, then you can use the pick tool again, put it in there and loosen up the uh, hose. So you're going to do this process for both of these hoses. going to pull the clamps off, loosen them up with the uh, pick tool, and then pull the hoses off. Once you get these two hoses pulled back off, then we're going to go back up top. And I started from the driver's side, and I reached around over here, and I started pulling the hose and the assembly upwards like this. And since it was already broken, it made it easy to pull it out. 
So you're gonna pull that out and then you're gonna pull the uh, second half over here out like this and set these aside. So I'm installing a factory replacement unit. I will link these up in the description. Now we're gonna prep this by putting a little bit of a uh, by putting a little bit of liquid dish soap in the ends of the hoses. So if you put a little bit of liquid dish soap on the ends here, it makes it really easy to slide them onto the pipes. So after you lube up the ends of the hoses with the dish soap, now we're gonna feed the new uh, assembly down into position. So you're just gonna slide it over the top like this and just take your time to slide it down. It, it is a little tricky, it gets caught on a lot of things. So you just take your time and work it down into position, you know, both on the left and the right side of the vehicle at the same time. And then the little mounts in the back, I went ahead and hooked those onto the firewall and uh, on both the left and the right side. The pipe on the back with the two little mounting brackets, I had those mounted onto the little studs on the firewall. And I went ahead and put the 10 millimeter nuts on those. And then also the pump over here on the driver's side, I went ahead and mounted that up against the firewall and put the two 10 millimeter nuts on that. You can also go ahead and mount the two hoses that went onto the heater core pipes. So slide those on into position. And you can go ahead and make sure that all the bolts are, are secure or the nuts are secure. You can tighten those down if you want to right now or you can wait and do it until the, everything is attached. A lot of times that's how I do it. I'll start all the nuts and bolts, but I won't tighten them down until they're all started. That way I have a little wiggle room to move things left and right to, uh, to get the bolts or hoses or whatever I need started. Now that everything's mounted up top, I'm gonna go underneath here. I'm gonna put the back hose on first and then put the clamp on and then put the front, the forward hose on and then I'll put the clamp on. And to, to uh, once you get these these hoses on the pipes to get the clamps uh, they come pre-loaded or pre-sprung and once you do it all you have to do is squeeze them and release them quickly and that'll that'll pop them free and they'll they'll se securely mount onto the pipes and hoses so when i went to reinstall these the metal pipes were moving and flexing around so what i did was held them hold them still with another pair of long needle nose pliers I slid the hose on and then once I got the hose on I released the clamp and that held everything still and maybe made it easier for me once you get those two hoses secure the bracket the slightly above you can go ahead and start that and start the nut and tighten it down you can either tighten it down from uh, below here or you can do it from up top with the uh, wobbly socket like the way I showed you when I the way I took it off now you can go ahead and reinstall the wheel and bolt it up now back at top, we're going to make sure that the hose clamps at the very back towards the firewall connecting the uh, heater core pipes are secure. So you can squeeze those and quickly release them to pop them free. And then we're going to hook the hoses up and make sure that all our hose brackets are, are connected. So I'm going to slide on this hose here and then uh, put the clamp on. And like I was showing you before or telling you before, you just squeeze these clamps and then rapidly release them and that'll pop them free. So you're going to do that. Make sure that these ones here in the back are secure. So once you get the ones in the furthest back here secure, then you can go ahead and install the other two hoses and uh, re-secure the clamps on those two hoses here. So you'll slide the, the, the one right here over the top, put it on, put the hose clamp back on, and then put the clamp back on here and make sure that's all secure. Now that that's secure, I just double checked that all the clamps and everything are there and uh, bolted up here on the firewall. And after I'm confident that's all secure, I'm gonna plug in the electrical connector for the pump so you'll plug in the uh, little wire loom holder there, put the connector on, and then put the little metal pin that held the, uh, the electrical connector on. So slide that on right here. It, it is a little bit of a pain, but go ahead and slide that back on. And then after you get that slid on, then you're gonna make sure that the hose below here is secure. Now we're gonna start filling it up with 50% Nissan approved coolant and distilled water. And we're gonna fill the reservoir over there on the side until the, the full mark. And then I'm gonna go in the vehicle and I'm gonna put the heater on hot on the hottest position with the blower fan on the lowest position. And I'm gonna make sure the air conditioning is turned off. And I'm gonna start the vehicle and run run the vehicle. You can also remove the radiator cap off the radiator and fill the radiator up too to make sure that there's no air bubbles in the radiator. Put the cap back on. And you're gonna run the vehicle for about 10 or 15 minutes until the uh, thermostat opens up. And you'll usually feel the uh, fan come on, and once the fan comes on, you know that it's hot enough for the thermostat to have been opened up. You're just going to double check your coolant level in the reservoir on the uh, on the side there. So you're going to make sure it's at the uh, the full mark on the side here. And uh, once you do that, it should be complete. Occasionally, you can get an air bubble in the heater core system, and you can remove the little nipple in the 
very back of the uh, heater hoses there and let the uh, air and coolant bleed out back there in the back. I will link up all the parts and tools that I use in this video in the description. I'm Brian Nessa from How To Automotive. I'd like to thank you guys for watching my videos, encourage you to subscribe, invite you to head over to the howtoautomotive.com website for more valuable videos like this. Thank you again for watching.